home so we guys we wanted to bring you guys a one-year home update video uh, in this video we really want to just kind of sit down and discuss what it's been like living here for a year uh, feelings of living here for a year things that we originally talked about in our regrets video if we still feel that way about some of those things if we were able to knock out any of those projects any of the projects that we have uh, coming up in the future and um, just kind of give you guys some updates on some things that we originally talked about in previous videos and just bring things full circle. So a couple things that I felt like we should discuss was uh, in a previous video, we actually talked to you guys about our steps. We told you that we would come back with a quote that we actually got. So if you remember, and if you haven't already seen that video, go check out our regrets video that we made. I want to say June of 2021. And in that particular video, we just talked about some things that we didn't get a chance to do at the design center or that we chose to forego at the design center and that we would probably make those things projects in the home in the near future. And one of those things was actually our carpeted steps. So uh, we actually decided to go ahead and keep the carpet on the steps. The original plan was to move in day one and have the carpet removed. Um, we you know, knew some people who were going to come in and pull it up and replace it that day. However, once they put the carpet in a few weeks before closing, we liked the carpet. It worked for the steps. And we were like, you know what? Maybe we'll keep it for the first year or two, see how that goes. Um, and then possibly what we knew actually going with the wood steps option was inevitable. Uh, it was just a matter of how long we would keep the carpet. So after being here for a year, the carpet being pulled was just like, all right, as soon as possible, I want the carpet pulled up. I, you know, I want the wooden steps for aesthetic reasons. We both agree that it looks really nice. Uh, it gives the house an elevated look. And then if you watched our previous um, home, not home goods. Oh my God. At home? Yes. Our previous at home video, then you saw that we talked about another reason why we wanted the, the steps pulled up why we wanted the carpet pulled up and that's because the kids had made it their gathering space, so to speak. So we did get that quote back. So we actually only got one of the two quotes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the like I told you guys, he originally said he can pull the carpet up and leave the border and that would be one cost or he can pull the carpet and the border up and extend the steps all the way through and that was going to be a second cost and that's actually the cost that we got. Do you want to go ahead and give it to the back? So for the parts, material, and labor, it was just under ten grand. Now, mind you, it would have been six thousand to go and do it through the design center. And even though, as you know, if you're you know familiar with the whole home situation right now, um, prices have gone up, and I think the cost to do the wood stair with the risers through the design center now is like sixty eight hundred. So it went up like eight hundred bucks. So still significantly more than if we would have did it then. But um, I'm working on a second quote now, and this is uh, pretty much me just subcontracting the thing myself, like getting the, the wood parts um, directly from the vendor, then getting a trim carpenter in here to pull the carpet, lay the wood, and then getting the painters to come in here and paint and stain the steps. So just subcontracting myself, and this, I'll probably end up doing it for off the top of my head because the parts itself are around $2,700 I think it was and paint labor, I, I was coming somewhere about $4,000 approximately off the top of my head so still a significant savings from when you know if I was doing the design center but also way less than if I were to go through um, well I don't want to say their name but the person that gave us the original quote uh, 10 grand for parts and labor so yeah, like I respect, you know, what all he would have to do um, as far as pulling up the carpet and laying down the wood because he said he would have to pull up the uh, railing as well as what is, like, the spindles and different things like that and then put them back down. But y'all, like... Oh, I don't even know if you... Did I see the quote or just tell you? You just told me. So, in the quote, he has it broke down total, but then he's, there's a part where he said his profit. So I don't know if that was intentional, but his profit was only $1,600. I find that hard to believe. Like, I find that extremely hard to believe. Knowing that I know how much the parts cost. And 
to pull, I could pull the carpet myself. Like, it's pulling carpet. It, that's not a big deal. The labor to put the, so let's, let's say pulling the carpet, I did myself. If it's $2,600 for the parts, then you're trying to tell me that it's, what, five grand in labor to put the wood, you know, lift the spindles, and it just, I mean, that's a really simple process. But nonetheless, I, I just, I don't, I think it's profit margin a little bit more than that, which is fine by me, you know, quote whatever you quote, but if I can get the same job done, and I'm, it's not like getting it done for cheaper, it's like getting the same quality of work, but I'm just subcontracting myself instead of going through a contractor, so that's probably the route we're going to go. Yeah, and again, like we said, we didn't get that second quote for the first option of just pulling the carpet. Um, and we did ask for two, so we did only get one. So, um, yeah, that's just, I know a lot of people said, like, well, you should have just went through the, the design center. And actually, y'all said I should listen to Akeem. Akeem is the one who said he didn't want to go through the design center for the wood steps. And I agreed with him after he said he didn't want to. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to spend the six grand because I knew I could get it done for, at that time, I probably could have got it done for half the cost. Um, the way that I'm talking about doing it now. So even if that's gone up a little bit, I, I'll still come out on top. It's just that for simplicity reasons, being able to move in and it already be done, yeah, I should have did that. Yeah, like I think that, so going back to, like I said, the regrets video, um, that would probably be the one thing, not that we didn't go through the design center to get it done, but that we didn't stick with our original plan of getting it done the day we moved in. When we said, you know, as soon as we closed, we were going to have it pulled and replaced. That would be my main regret was just not having it done that same day. I, I mean, things happen for a reason, but that quote, the price, it's just, it's, yeah, yeah it's not, not going to happen. Not doing that. Um, so in the meantime, we also had contractors come in. Um, and like I said, in the very beginning, we told you guys about different projects that we want to do. I know we talked to you guys about the quote, or at least the project that we want to do in the uh, theater because we were, you know, showing you guys our new theater chairs. Um, if you haven't already checked out that video, check that out where we show you guys our updated theater chairs. And then we will have an update again coming relatively soon. So make sure you guys stay tuned. But we also got quotes for, we have like what, two or three quotes for the dining room wall for the paneling on the dining room wall. Um, yeah, we, ne we never showed a picture. Should, about, should we show them? Yeah, we can go ahead or and... Or should we just reveal it once we do it? That's a good question. So, so we we'll show pull you that over. over in yeah. the, in the, we won't show you exactly what we were doing, but we'll show you some images of... Some examples of, of what, what we're, we're talking doing. about. Because if you're... I mean, you've probably seen it. It's extremely popular right now. It's just, you know, just wood... Not panels, but wood detail on wall that, you know, you paint. An accent wall, but just with the wood details. Um... Yeah, we had like these big plans before we moved in. Uh, we actually had someone come out and we had, you know, decided on a couple walls that we wanted to do. In hindsight, being here a year later, I'm so glad a lot of things that we talked about doing before we moved in, we didn't go that route. Uh, for numerous reasons, but one of the main reasons was once we got here and lived here and saw everything put together and kind of got an idea of like our design, um, our design style and desire of what we want the house to look like we would have had to change a lot of things within the first you know six or seven months of living here one of the things was actually getting the paneling done in the uh, bedroom I, I thought we were gonna go jet black uh, in the bedroom and we've actually changed up our design style about that and I told you guys numerous times I wanted to be very light and airy and the black contrast in there just would have been a little too bold for what I wanted for the bedroom. And then originally in the office, we wanted to do a black accent wall. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much have asked that also because then we decided we wanted to do cabinets and a built-in desk. So that was actually one of the quotes that we got recently was for a guy to come out and he's gonna do cabinets behind us and then he's gonna do, what is it, what is the desk called? Because I kept calling it an L shape. T shape. Yeah, so he's going to do a T shaped desk because, as you guys know, Akeem and I are going to share the office. Um, we both edit our videos and then we both have our own businesses that we run. So, you know, we want to be able to have our own setup where we can go in and work either simultaneously or, you know, whenever I'm in there, he's out here, vice versa. So we actually have a really good design for that. I, did you get the quote back for that one? Yeah. Did you want to talk about it or not this particular video? So there's a there's a carpenter that lives in our neighborhood and he does amazing work. But um, the only issue is 
like it doesn't come with like finish it doesn't come finished so you know he showed us a couple designs where he built custom built ins on the wall the desk and he showed us custom islands islands in the kitchen that he's built with spindles the whole nine like amazing work but it doesn't come finished so there's no paint there's no top to it none of that so um, just to kind of give it hindsight, uh, we have we already know the one company that we're going to go to, and I'm going to touch on that in a minute, to do the detail accent wall in the dining room, and it was $1,100, and the guy that will do the same thing but won't paint it is $1,000, so it's like for an extra 100 bucks, why wouldn't I have it painted? Because yeah. you're going to have to paint the wall and then paint the, um, the wood accents as well, but we talked about it. I think that's something that we're going to do ourselves, actually. So we picked a pretty simple design. Um, we've researched it. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna try it out. We're gonna so, try it out. I think it. I'm handy with the tools. Don't get it. Don't get me wrong. But it's like when you get into intricate, duck, intricate cuts and details, and you got to do math and geometry and I could do both of those separately. I could do math or I could do this, but trying to put them together to create an intricate design, I'll pay a professional. And originally that was the plan. Like originally we had something a little bit more detailed. Y'all yeah, see she cut me off that time. I did. But I just want to say originally we did have something a little bit more detailed, which is why we looked into, you know, different contractors and originally why we had, you know, people come out. But then we both came across a design that we really, really liked and it was a um, simplistic design. And so, after careful consideration, we were like, we should probably be able to do this. So, that's how we're, that's why we're going that route. So, yeah, so that's why, so we did get a quote. He, he gave us a quote to, like, build the risers in our theater for the chairs. He gave us a quote to, uh, right behind, or right over here, actually. right behind Missy over here, um, is where all of our uh, speakers that we have throughout the house, the terminals there. So we need like a credenza or something enclosed for sure. Yeah, that we can, you know, tuck those cords and boxes and stuff in. So he gave us a quote to doing a custom build there and then another one over here to match if we decide to do the symmetry or just one over there. He gave us a quote. We already talked about the office, we talked about the dining room. Um, I want to say that's all he gave us a quote yeah, for. Yeah, I mean, like he said, the risers and the theater, and then he's also the one that gave us the quote for like a little bar area. Yeah, so, but the thing, it doesn't come finished. It would be built in, so then you would have to tape off everything. Yeah, and then paint it. So that, no, for that, it's like, I'd rather pay a professional to come in and do everything versus me having to come in and hire somebody separate to pay. Especially if the price to have somebody do it and finish it is, you know, close to the same price as, you know, someone that's a charter just to do build it. it and construct it and leave the painting up to you, so. Yeah. The other things that we toyed around was originally we weren't going to do wallpaper. And now we picked out a few th few wallpaper ideas that we liked that we're going to bring um, to different areas of the home also. Yeah, it wasn't a situation where we didn't like wallpaper, especially the new modern style wallpapers. It's not, you know, what our parents well, we and grandparents had. It. Yeah, we were, we were probably going to go just straight paint or yeah. paint wood kind of detail. But a, a one, you know, semi-major project that, you know, we're going to do and put on the channel soon is um and you're talking about the half bath right yeah the half bath. so uh, we were toying around because you know the, the half baths are very uh boring and plain but you know it's something where pretty much every guest goes and you can elevate your entire home by just you know updating that space so i had sent missy a concept that in my mind i was already thinking of but you know sometimes you need a visual representation of it and it match some things that she was telling me also so when I sent it to her she was like yep I love it I love all of that so I don't want to get too much detail but just just know a project within itself. You just know when you see that video come up um, it would be a nice reveal so. um, the other thing that we went back and forth about so at the design center we originally had a black island or was it gray? it was gray okay so we originally had a gray island and then I was like nope I want white Everything. I want white walls, white baseboards, white island, white cabinets. Let's do white everything and then bring in the color design everywhere else. So let's just have a bold but basic um, She's layout. Like a neutral game. It wasn't even so much neutral. It was just like I wanted a 
fold but blank canvas, and I really want. That's what I mean. To, like if it's like everything is all white and neutral, you can put whatever accent colors you want on. Yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I really wanted to bring in all and like everything else, and like the decor, the artwork, the furniture. Like I really wanted to bring in all those bold elements everywhere else, and then we can switch them out, you know, as needed. Because as you know, trends change, times change, um, your taste in what you want changes. So. I really wanted it to the point where we didn't have to do a lot of major work um, if, need, if, if we didn't need to. So um, we went with white and now we are considering bringing black to the island. It's not 100% or did we decide? I think uh, we're like 90% sure we want to change it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're like 90% sure we're going to change the island black. So I think the island, I think the island we should do last Okay. because... We're gonna introduce a lot of black. Yeah. So, so then we want to see what it what after we introduce everything, what are we looking like? Because it kind of transitions to the next thing, but like, um, and I know we've mentioned it in the previous video, but just in case, you know, you didn't see it or this is your first time watching this, we we're going to for sure paint some of, if not all of, the interior doors black. Yes. So if we paint those black, we already have the black fireplace and what we're doing in the dining room and then everything else but once we do all of that and we still think black will go good there i'm good with doing it yeah i agree with that. but then the other thing that so we have a coat closet which is behind the camera that we never use so we're actually thinking about repurposing that coat closet and turning it into something else more so a linen closet because if you've watched our home uh, update video, when we when we remove the middle wall in our uh, closet, and hopefully we can get some inserts in here to show you guys what it looked like before and after, uh, it took away our linen closet from our bathroom. So we keep our bathroom towels and stuff underneath a keen side of the sink, but I don't want that there. So we don't use this closet. Like it's really just our blow up mattresses for when people come to visit. And coats. And coats and just, and, and the coats are just in there just because when we first moved in, we put them all in there. But um, when we finish wearing our coats, at least me, all my stuff goes into the closet because it's just, it's right there. Um, and then we have other places we can hang up coats. So we're thinking about turning that closet into a linen closet. I feel like that's just a simple, DIY project Akeem and I can knock out. I don't think we def I don't think we need to contact no, that's just, that. That's just shelves. I can do that in a weekend. Yeah. A so, weekend. so that's a project we're going to work on. And then we still have to update our um, pantry. And there's some things that we want to do in the laundry room. Um, we talked about a lot of projects that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We've knocked out none of them. Yeah. Uh, we've knocked out no projects. And majority of the reason why is because... One of the main things I wanted to do before we started doing different projects, and I may have, I may reverse that now, but was I wanted to get the furniture and decor in. And as you guys know, that has been a headache. Like we were looking at in tape, nightstands. We were looking at nightstands. Y'all, I pulled up those nightstands in April. They said November. No one, no one wants to pay even 50% of anything that they're not going to see for almost a year later. Like that, the thought process is just frustrating yeah and i know a lot of people have suggested you know other places we can go and we appreciate it and we've checked out places and those kind of would just be temporary solutions so it's like would you do a temporary solution or would you just hold off and just get the things that you want because the truth of the matter is we don't plan on moving any, anytime soon um unless that price is right so projects have been put on hold and a lot of decor options have been put on hold so what we have been doing is like the little, you know, things around the home. So we told you guys about how we added the speakers. You guys know that we added the additional cameras around the home. Obviously, we couldn't show those for security purposes. Um, we've added the handles, um, hardware, and we've um, added the pendant lights. And so some we of the painted the mantle. <laughs> that was something. So... Real quick before we go to the next thing. Hmm? No, I'm saying we stained it. Yeah, we yeah we stained the mantle. We do want to do another coat. Um, we were just trying to see, you know, obviously we got the table. We we're gonna to remove what, the mantle. So that's what I was gonna ask you. So originally in the previous video we talked about how I wanted a mantle so bad, and Akeem didn't want the mantle, but Akeem got the mantle because he knew I wanted a mantle to decorate. 
but then the mantle is like super high like i i can't even see over the mantle i have to get like a chair to see above the mantle and because the mantle is stopping us from bringing the tv down we toyed with well not toyed but we discussed just removing the mantle and bringing the tv down so nonetheless we're going to end up removing that lower the tv patch the tile replace the tile cover up the electrical bring the electrical down and just bring that tv down to um a better viewing height and because of the fireplace that we have it only it can be 12 12 12 you see the 6 or 12. Close, yeah either way it, it doesn't have to be that far the tv doesn't have to be that far above the fireplace um because of the one that we got we talked about the pneumatic switch do you still miss it for the dishwasher i mean there was just one of the things about it today i mean there's tools that you can buy to incorporate that it's just a it doesn't bother me. I mean, you just go under the cabinet. I think the only thing that would frustrate me, or does frustrate me, is sometimes they'll turn off the uh, dishwasher when turning on the garbage disposal. But other than that, it's not even a big deal. However, we did recently speak with a water filter uh, company. And so we originally went with getting the soap dispenser instead of the pneumatic switch. So we are either going to replace the, well, I guess we have no choice because the other one is the... No, they can drill into the counter. I, I'm, I'm okay with getting rid of the soap dispenser. Um, well, whatever she wants, but either way, they can be. I thought you were okay with it too. I mean, I, yeah, but I'm just saying, just it's an option to just drill on the other side of the countertop to put the water dispenser in there. It's yeah. not a big, it's not so, a big deal. So that's like we did meet with a guy. So that's something that we're gonna go ahead and do, just because Texas water is just completely different from what we've been dealing with at home with Michigan's water. It's just a little bit more harder here. Two more questions, and then we can go ahead and do our, um, I guess, our final thing, you know, that we want to close out with. The uh, one is the fan or light in the office. How do you feel about that still? Mm -hmm. Us being here for a year now, and then us having, like, to go in the office to actually edit videos. I haven't really been in there like that, so. Since the beginning, yeah. But when so, you were in there a lot on the, lab, on the computer. Um, I didn't, like, I didn't. I haven't been in there enough to even remember how I felt, but it doesn't, whichever way you want to go, I would say probably definitely need to put a fan in there. That's not that big of a deal, but. I mean, I brought in portable fans, but I do think I still want to put a fan in there. And then the pantry switch. Um. Would you replace it or are you okay with keeping it? I would, it, it depends on how problematic it is to replace. Mm -hmm. And um, for those that don't know, so we have a, jam switch on our pantry which is just a, it's a little button that fits between the door and the door jam so almost like a refrigerator light so when you open up the pantry the light comes on automatically and then you close the light goes off which for adults that would be great but with kids they like go in the pantry and then they just walk away and they just leave the pantry light on and because it's around the corner sometimes you may not even see it if i'm you know we're in the living room or in our room we're in the front of the house you may not even see it until you go kill the lights, getting ready to go to bed, and then you see this light coming from around the corner. So you gotta go close the door. So it's annoying more than anything, but I assume it's not that difficult to take that switch out, run the electrical up, put a, a normal switch or even a motion switch in there. I would be okay with a motion switch. Um, but yeah, that's something that, something we'll probably definitely so to me, I feel like it doesn't make a difference, right? I feel like the last house we had just a regular light switch and they would leave the light on and close the pantry door and we wouldn't see it unless you went to That's the true. pantry. And then here it's the same thing. I feel like that would be the only solution um, would be the, like he said, go in there and the light automatically comes on. And if we do that there, I would like to do the same thing to the laundry room. Or I'll put a uh, tension spring on the door because when you open up the door your body is not holding it open just based on how the design of the pantry mm -hmm. when you walk away it should close automatically so i may put that actually may be the easier solution yeah better automatically close because you're not worried about opening and keep closing it just like i said based on the design of it and the layout so yeah putting a a spring on that a tensioner i'm not sure what it's called but to automatically close the door would probably be better being here for a year, though, to be honest with you, um, it's been amazing. The year went by so fast, right? I think we both can agree. Like, this year went by super fast. Like, we, we woke up and it was like, oh, my God, we've been here for a year now. And um, it has been everything that we 
imagined it to be. Mm -hmm. um, it has been a blessing, nonetheless, uh, to be able to call this our home and then to be able to call this our first home. Um, from the lot to the um, section to the floor plan, I mean, we talked about doing this for the better half of almost two years. And so to be here a year in has just been amazing. And like I said, the biggest thing for one of the biggest things for me is how we signed it. We signed in August, but you know we were steadily watching prices increase, but nothing crazy, nothing outside of maybe just a little bit more than a normal. But you know, after we signed our contract, I mean, prices just skyrocketed. Where you know people are building the same floor plan for three. 100, 350, and pretty soon here, $400,000 more than what we paid for it a year ago. So it's just, you know, and we just, we, we take all that equity growth. Like, yeah, we paid the, the extra property taxes on it, but it's just, it's mind blowing to think that usually what you would see happen in a 10, 15 year period of, you know, 4% appreciation growth year over year. You know, you get that in one year as opposed to 10, 15 years. And it's it's not unfathomable to think that, you know, this home will touch a million dollars really, really soon if things, you know, keep going the way that they're going. And like I said, God's timing is ultimately perfect because, I mean, if we would have just been two to three months later, we would have paid $100,000 more for this house. Yeah, because we actually weren't even going to... We planned on going under contract... In December. In December of that year. And December it just so happens that we went under contract August. Actually, a week before, they had a price increase. So... Day that's before. The, the, yeah, day yes, before. the day before. But it, it was a, a pretty hefty one that was coming. And it was either by now or hold off and buy December. The only reason that we wanted to wait until December because um, in our community, development was moving uh, across the street um, into the next phase and they had more water lots. And we had an eye on a couple water lots. And so we knew that was coming down the pipeline early that year. I think we found out in February mm -hmm. um, that that new section was going to be open probably in December. So we were going to wait till December. And then a month later, COVID hit. And then every, everything went, you, hey, every, it, you know, everything went like this. So it was just like, okay, you're real time watching it, trying to time it. And then it got to the point was like, well, what's the point? These new lots opened up for us and it was a perfect situation. Signed a contract, and, uh, you know, six months later we were in it. Six months after that, we were up a hundred. Six months after that, we were up two hundred. No, we were up 200, yeah, 200 addition to the 100, so it's, it's just been a wild ride. So. Yeah, it's been a blessing. All right, and so for our final update. You know, so, like I said, I know a lot of you have been asking about the pool. So, the pool is definitely a go, um, but I just delayed it. Our original date was February, but um, like I said, just, we, you know, we've always been transparent. So, for me to finance the pool, we had to have been in the home at least a year. Mm -hmm. Um for them to use the current market value and not the appraised value without getting too deep into it. So I had to wait at least a year um, that we've been in a home. So after the year mark, um, we started to look into it and rates started to go up, um, lending rates as well. And then I have a couple opportunities that presented themselves where I can potentially take that money and put it into a different vehicle. Project. And yeah, different type yeah, of project. Oh, project. <laughs> a different project and uh, double up or triple up that money as opposed to putting it right into the pool so um, for me personally it's one of those things where you know you got the smart decision and a decision that you want and you know to put ourselves in a more economically strong financially stable uh, decision I'm delaying it because um, we could technically probably start in mid-summer I would say July, August. Mm -hmm. But if I do it then, I mean, the pool will be ready. Around, what, December? December. And I granted, in Texas, still 80, 90 degrees in December. But <laughs> the pool is expensive. And I want to get, it's it's over, it's six figures. It's a little over $100,000 for the pool. And the outdoor kitchen and everything. 
and that payment starts the minute they break ground, right? So for me to do that, I want to be able to take full advantage of it. So I battery died, but like I was saying, um, so it takes about, with the outdoor kitchen and pool and everything, it's going to take about four months or so. Four uh, six. Yeah, I don't, well, somewhere around there. I don't think it'll take quite six, but just to case, you know, we, we're still very much in a pandemic and we're still dealing with supply chain issues right now. I'm in a pool group for my community and, you know, some people are still dealing with issues. So I didn't want to start that process towards the end of the warm season and start to pay that bill and really can enjoy the full fruits of it. Um, you know, like we want to when it first, you know, when you first get it done and installed and ready to go. Like, great, there's going to be times once we get it, you're going to pay for it even when you're not using it. We get that. But it's just that initial, it just sucks to have the pool done and it's 40 degrees outside, you know. So, yeah. even though we have a, a spa, even though the pool will be heated, I'm not getting in the pool. I don't care how much heated it is if it's not, you know. Not even just that. It's the cost, right? Yeah. It's the paying for a whole pool in the backyard and only being able to use a small portion of it. So, that's a decision that we both, you know, it was a hard decision, right? <laughs> but that's something that we both kind of. It wasn't really hard because it's not like you, it's not like we're canceling it. We're just delaying it. So it's delay, not deny. So it's just, it's, we're just putting it off. Ideally, started at the end of this year. And that would be ready for spring next year. Or at least before Zuri's birthday. Yeah, so somewhere along those lines. So it's still happening. It's still going down. We're not canceling it. We're just moving mm -hmm. it so we can make, so essentially we can make some more money. Um, because I, I, I don't want to go into too much detail. Um... But let's just say there's a lot of opportunities right now um, that if you have some disposable income and money that you can really take advantage of, um, you know, 100% either on the investment side as far as, you know, doing property or some, you know, stock options. There's a whole bunch of ways, but I'm going to leverage that and hopefully, you know, I don't have to finance as much of the pool. And if everything goes really according to plan, hopefully we can pay cash for the pool. So, and now we don't have to, uh, but even I'm torn about that because I like using other people's money. And then, not to mention, we actually kind of went back and forth about would this be our last house? Originally, it was supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, that too. And but then, when you come down to like security reasons and what we actually want in a house, like, like areas that just make sense for us and the size of our family, we actually toyed with the fact that this may not be our final destination. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. You know, life is unpredictable, so we'll yeah. see how that goes. Um, but I know a lot of you have been asking about the pool update, so definitely wanted to give that to you guys. Um, but yes, it is still happening. So there's still going to be patio furniture shopping that we can store. Um, store here, store at my parents' house. There. So it's we're still going to do all that. Um, we just delayed it a little bit, that's all. So we, like we mentioned, we do have some projects that we, you know, Got written down, got a timeline for, got, you know, materials and different things that um, go along with that project. So we have a lot of stuff to bring to you guys um, in the near future. Stay tuned because we have some big things coming, as always. Yeah, and I know we, we've talked about a lot, so just to kind of wrap it up. In the very, very, very near future, you can expect to see in videos the dining room update, at least as far as the wall, bathroom, the um, powder room update. Um, a patio update, at least a little bit. Um, patio update, pantry update. Yeah, linen that's closet. coming. Uh, linen closet um, and more furniture that should be coming on the way. So there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes, but you should have all those videos and you know coming out really, really soon. So definitely, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And make uh, sure you're following us on. So we both we just jumped on Twitter. Um, back on Twitter, I should say. Uh, but Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok are going to be the same name for us all the way across. You'll see that on the screen. If you don't already follow us, um, make sure you follow us because, again, you get a more glimpse inside our life with our kids. And then, you know, we also have different tips and ideas, and, and uh, we're always getting your guys' opinions on there also. All right. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know what Mars is so You nailed it. Alright, so again, thanks for tuning in for another video, and uh, we'll see you.